Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 14, Mixtures and Solutions. So in this chapter, we're going to look at a couple different things, and um, you're going to find out that there's different ways that we can classify things based on how they are mixed. So in this video, we're going to learn how to accurately determine the difference between suspensions, colloids, and solutions. Then we're going to determine the types of colloids or solutions. And then lastly, we're going to correctly determine the number of moles in a molarity problem. So what is a solution? I have three examples here. I have um, toothpaste. I have mouthwash. And I have hairspray. So my question to you is, which of these three is a solution? Um, here are some examples also, and you might want to look at these and tell me which of these do you think is a solution. Okay, so in order for it to be a solution, it has to be homogenous. So that means there has to be even mixture. If I take a slice, I'm not going to see a different variation in the slice. Um, it could be a gas, a liquid, or a solid. So most of the time people think a solution is a liquid, but that isn't necessarily the case. Um, right now you're breathing a solution. Okay, solute and solvent. Solute typically dissolves in the solvent. This is really important. You'll have to figure out which one is the solute, which one is the solvent. Um, for instance, sugar water. If you were to make sugar water, um, notice that water is the solvent, but sugar is the solute. Salt water. Salt water, once again, water is the solvent. However, salt is the solute. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, this table, we're looking at different kinds of solutions. Notice that air is an example of a solution, and here the solvent is nitrogen because it's a larger proportion and oxygen is only the solute. Um, here we have vinegar as an example of a solution. Notice that water is the solvent and acetic acid is the solute. So this is an example of a liquid solution. And then lastly there's steel. Steel is a combination of solid iron and carbon. Iron is the solvent Carbon is a solute. So please note with um, heterogeneous mixtures, they are essentially not uniform. Um, they have separate individual substances. And suspensions are mixtures that actually settle. Now, the toothpaste that I showed you, that is actually an example of a suspension. Okay, colloids. So colloids are a heterogeneous mixture. But notice the difference between a colloid and a suspension is they do not settle out. Um, my hairspray that I showed you, that is actually an example of a colloid. Here are some different types of colloids, and you've probably seen a number of these before, and I'll just point out a couple of them. Uh, blood is an example of a colloid. Notice it's a solid particle dispersed in liquid. Um, Milk and mayo, they are considered colloids, and it's a liquid within a liquid. Usually it's egg mixed in with oil. Um, liquid aerosol, so if you have spray deodorant or like I had hairspray, notice that it's liquid particles dispersed in a gas. Okay, so the last part of this video, I want to talk about concentration. And concentration it's important for chemists to know specifically how much solute is dissolved in solvent. So we're going to get good at trying to calculate what is the amount of solvent, solute versus the amount of solvent. And one of the major um, concentrations that we use in this chapter is what we call molarity. Um, you've done percent by mass before. Percent by volume is just volume of solute over volume of solution, and you've obviously done mole fraction before. So molarity is the number of moles dissolved in a liter of solution, or per liter of solution. 
So we use the calculation moles of solute over liters of solution. So if you are in milliliters, you need to change to liters. And here is um, one of the problems that we're going to do here. So they want to know, um, we have a two molar solution, and they want to know how much volume. So the way we set this up is we say 2m equals, uh, we get 20 grams. And when I do the um, molar mass of it, I get 142.04 grams per mole. And I'm going to divide that by x. I don't know what x is. So when I solve for x, I get um, 0 0.141 moles divided by 2 molar, and when I solve for x, I get 0 0.070 liters. Okay, so I want you to do uh, number 2. So instead of solving for volume, you're going to be solving for mass. Okay, so in summary, please note that individual substances in a heterogeneous mixture um, they are distinct, so we're able to separate them out. And these two types are typically suspensions or colloids, and those can be um, differentiated depending on what makes up those uh, heterogeneous mixtures. Please note that solutions can be either a gas, a liquid, or a solid. Um, like I said, the um, mouthwash is an example of a liquid solution. The air you breathe is an example of a gaseous solution. And then lastly, concentration can be measured quantitatively, and molarity is a good way for chemists to know the concentration, which is moles of solute over liters of solution.